Hi all, I, I want to continue from the first uh, session that I did on self-love. If you haven't watched that uh, session yet, I encourage you to do so. And um, this session here is going to be on the topic of cultivating a creative practice, a creative life art practice, a daily spiritual practice. Um, all of those terms kind of capture um, what this work that I've been focusing in on kind of deals with. So, um, yeah, I want to, I, I have kind of typed something out here and maybe I'll make comments as I go through, but, um, anyways, this is going to be about cultivating a creative life art practice. So here's a little bit about creating a daily spiritual practice. The first thing to learn is self-love. If you have not already seen my brief video on that, please go back and watch that now. Self-love is the absolute core function of my teachings. I learned this the most in the world from Ashley Turner, who is a yogini and psychotherapist. I then spent several years unpacking what it meant in my own life. Something that I believe can make space for this to happen is the cultivation of awareness in one's life through meditation and mindfulness practices. Another person who I have learned from named Mingya Rinpoche, who is a Buddhist monk, taught me a fundamental lesson as I began my journey into meditation. He showed me how the essence of meditation is awareness. The effect of it can often be peace and calm, but the essence is awareness. Also, he taught me how there is such a thing as formal and informal meditation. Formal meditation is when one sits down or lays down and focuses in on the breath or uses a mantra for a determined amount of time. Informal meditation, then, is all of the rest of the day. And this is where the teaching really took off for me. You see, it is a kind of training that you're doing in the formal meditation, whereas when you are living the rest of your life, you're in the flow of lived reality, still able to call upon what you have learned, but simultaneously engaged with the world in dynamic ways. This is what life art is all about for me. And I should say that life art is the term that revealed itself to me in my own study and practice. I think it shares very much with what others have described, like Elizabeth Gilbert with the term creative living and Flora Bowley with the term the art of aliveness and Frederick Dodson with the term reality creation and many, many others. And by all means, I did not invent the term life art. I thought that I may have at some point, but it was out there, I'm sure. My work has been to develop it and unpack what it can mean to live your life as art. Uh, but I digress. I want to say how this combination of formal and informal practice has become everything to me. It is a longer conversation to be sure about how one can go about cultivating a practice. However, I will say that what can help with starting out in establishing self-love are the fundamentals of good hygiene, a healthy, flavorful diet, exercise, good sleep habits, socialization, volunteering of some kind, and creativity. All of these things can help to set the foundation in one's life. I should say, though, what I have found in my own life is that rather than waiting until being at the top of the pyramid Whoops, I skipped over something there. Um, all of these things can help to set the foundation in one's life. I should say, though, also that I learned a great deal from looking at images of Maslow's hierarchy of need. I believe it was Abraham Maslow who created um, the, the pyr pyramid of need. Uh, those are my terms, but basically where you start out with the bare necessities of life and then you slowly build up to what is kind of at the top of the pyramid, um, which is self-actualization and creativity. Um, but let me say a little bit more about that. Um, 
But what I have found in my own life is that rather than waiting until being at the top of the pyramid to find self-actualization, one can imbue the base of the pyramid with art to begin with when one practices the art of living. That's essential. Otherwise, if you're an art-minded person, you could spend your entire life not being able to get off the ground in life because all you are inspired to do and feel capable of doing is making traditionally-minded creative projects and yet perhaps not being able to support yourself financially. But when you apply your creative thinking to life itself, it offers you an outlet that creates a foundation for much more in your life. This is the key to life art. I have said it before, but I will say it again here and in many other ways as well. The key teaching to life art is that you can take the creative energy that comes from inspiration and intuition and instead of directing it towards a canvas or clump of clay, you can become the artwork and direct it at yourself. This changes everything. Truly, I refer you here to the book I wrote called Life Art. It is available on my website under the books tab. So now to get to a daily practice, my practice has developed slowly over the course of eight to 10 years. Self-love was the key to start. Then a sense of living life as art and learning to meditate came together. There are meditations that I teach on my website as well. Go to www.johnkeppel.com, that's J-O-N-K-E-P-P-E-L, and click on the Teachings tab. Go to Talks and Meditations. There you will find meditations that I've created on the theme of life art. They were inspired by my learning of meditation through Andy Puttacombe of Headspace. This, I feel, truly is the present and future of art in some capacity. There already is a robust constellation of communities that are working in the creative living, life artist, and art of aliveness spheres. I do believe that a book should be written that, similar to relational aesthetics, covers this rise of living life as art as a movement of the 21st century in the Western canon of art while transcending it and bringing us together at a more inclusive global scale. The practice then becomes doing some sort of formal meditation, visualization, prayer, mindfulness, spiritual musings, contemplation, etc., and perhaps doing this a few times per day as time allows, morning, midday, and evening, or even more times woven in through the day in the spirit of another teaching by Mingyur Rinpoche that describes a practice of short times, many times. In any event, it is like a sustained release where your formal practice sinks into your everyday life. You are programming and reprogramming yourself through new and better habits of mind and understandings, revelations and insights. You are consciously curating your life. You are the artist of your life. Journaling is another helpful process for all of this. Truly, this is a beginning and gets at what a daily practice might consist of. So much room for variation and improvisation, though. We are all the artists of our life. We get our assignments, so to speak, directly from source. Feel into this and you will see that there is much to be learned from the ever unfolding of reality as a daily experience. Begin to delve into these ideas and live practices and you will begin to get a sense of what a life art practice or spiritual practice could be like. So thank you all so much for listening. Um, I hope to do many more of these lessons or teachings or sessions as um, they come to me. And it's kind of spontaneity. I was just watching something on Zen and creativity and artfulness. And my piano playing that I do is is an improvisation based around a pattern. So I guess that's kind of what um, these lessons are right now. So I'm just going with it. And I hope this has helped you somehow. And I'm sending lots of love as always. And enjoy the rest of your day. And all the best. <laughs>